Good evening, Lord of Life. Welcome to Midweek Unplugged. I am Deacon Kenny Champagne. Uh, this is our Wednesday evening worship space uh, here online. It's wonderful to have you with us, whether you are a first-time visitor and this is your first interaction with us here at Lord of Life, or if you've been uh, coming and enjoying and participating in this space every Wednesday night for the past year. Um, however you have come to find us, wherever you are at, you are a blessing to us, and it is just wonderful to be sharing this space of worship with you this evening. Um, I invite you to go to our website, lordoflifeva.org, um, and if you go to our worship page you should be able to find a connection card there you can complete that and let us know that you are worshiping with us this evening um, and as always you are welcome to join us on sunday mornings at 10 a.m on youtube facebook and or on our website whatever works for you and of course we will continue to uh, share in this space on wednesday evenings as well so thank you for being here and now i invite you to close your eyes take a few deep breaths in And as you release those breaths, release all the stress and anxiety from the day. Breathe in new life, refreshing air. And breathe out all of the worries. And now let us worship together. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God will come and there shall be continuous day. For at evening time there shall be light. God is light. In God there is no darkness at all. Let us sing together. Our reading tonight comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. You are exalted, Lord most, most High. Christ be exalted in this humble place. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. 
Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care for the, this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers from who, for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So these words from Paul, when at first glance when you read through it, it might be a bit confusing, and it might even seem completely irrelevant to us here in the 21st century. Paul's addressing the church in Corinth, and, and there's clearly an issue about what foods they can and cannot eat and how they go about eating those foods as far as sacrifices to idols. We hear this and go, this doesn't apply to us, right? This is not something that we necessarily struggle with in the 21st century. And so it might be really easy to look at these words, see that there's just confusing language here, and just read right past it and go on to the next stuff in, uh, in this 1 Corinthians letter. But the reality is that while Paul is directly... Um, talking to the, the church in Corinth in this community about a very specific thing, the words he has for the church there in Corinth are applicable to all of us because um, it's not just about the food that they're eating and the idols that some are worshiping. It goes much deeper than that. You see, the situation is that there are people in this community that are that believe that they need to eat specific foods for specific reasons or not eat specific foods for specific reasons as sacrifice to a god someplace but as paul speaks to to the church community in corinth paul addresses the fact that this community believes there's one god and that, that god has already made the sacrifice through christ jesus and so the need to eat specific foods or refrain from eating specific foods is, is not actually necessary for salvation, for, for God to love them. And so Paul's addressing the fact that what they eat is not an issue. But what's interesting is Paul goes on to talk about the necess necessity to care for and love the other people in that community. The, the other people who he talks about having knowledge, but knowledge not being the only thing, they have this knowledge of the idea that they, if they eat or don't eat certain foods, it is a sacrifice to God, but they don't know the love of Christ Jesus. They don't know the love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross and through the resurrection and so, as Paul shares with the Corinthians, Paul encourages them to think about those people who might not have witnessed, have a witness to the good news of Jesus. So Paul closes and ends with encouragement, saying that ultimately he would be willing to, and that we as Christians should be willing to sacrifice if it means helping others better witness and participate in what God is up to. So Paul says that if, if by him not eating meat helps 
the other people in that community to understand better who God is, to be in relationship with God better, to, to know who Christ is. If that's something that they need, then Paul will refrain from eating meat. Paul will join into that sacrifice for them as a witness to who Christ is, to help them see who Christ is. So I hope you are seeing that this isn't just about food, right? Because this actually applies to anything, anything that we might come across. And church, we, we run into this stuff all the time. And I think it might be a struggle for us here in America where, where our freedoms and liberties sometimes become the idols that we hold above other people. We become selfish. We become um, focused on our own needs as opposed to another's needs. I think we've witnessed that a lot over this past year in, in light of this pandemic. We've seen a lot of people um, hoarding toilet paper, just recently hoarding gas, right, for their own needs as opposed to caring for other people sacrificing a little bit for ourselves so that others may have a little bit for them as well. And so I wonder what it looks like for us as a church to to sacrifice out of love for others. And sure, we, we do a great job here at Lord of Life of, of sacrificing, of, of giving of our finances, of, of giving of our time, of helping other people. Um, we make a huge impact in this community. But we all have that thing, or maybe it's multiple things, that are sacred cows to us, that we hold on to so dearly that we're not willing to give up. And so I wonder what that is for you. What is that thing that you could give up if it might help another believer or another person come to believe? What might that be? You know, we are now in this really interesting phase of the pandemic where COVID-19 still exists, right? It hasn't gone away, but... Just recently, the CDC has stated that those who are vaccinated, it is um, now safe or more safe to be without a mask. Um, and this, is, this has really caused a lot of people and places to start wondering about mask mandates and what that looks like. Churches especially are running into this. I just recently read an article Pastor Nathan shared with me that talks just about this and how churches are wrestling with with mask wearing or not mask wearing. And I can tell you, I, I am with you. If you don't like wearing masks, I am with you. Uh, it, they get, especially this time of year, it gets very, very hot. I already have a lot on my face. Uh, when I wear a mask, it puts a little dent in my beard um, and, uh, and I, my face breaks out if I have it all long enough. It's not a fun thing to do. But the reality is we still have people in our community who are not vaccinated or can't get vaccinated. They don't have the opportunity. We have children who don't have the opportunity to be vaccinated yet. And so maybe this is one of the ways that we can make a sacrifice as a community of Christ, as, as a way to love the other people in our community. If we sacrifice and while we don't want to continue wearing masks, we keep on wearing our masks for one another. Not because we have to if we're vaccinated, but because we love the other person in our community so much that we are willing to make that sacrifice to continue to wear those masks for them. And you see that action is an action of, of love. It's, a, it's a, a big action. Maybe wearing masks isn't that big of an action, or maybe it is that big of an action for you. But it also demonstrates through that action who our God is, who Christ is, and how we as Christians are called to be be church together, to be community for one another. That is not about us. It's not about my personal liberties and freedoms. It is about everybody else's. 
You see, when I sacrifice for myself, for somebody else, I know that there is somebody else, another community, people in this community that are making sacrifices for me as well. And when we all do that, we all end up benefiting Yes, it might be painful at times. It might not always be super easy. But there are other times where it will be easier. There will be times when other people make those sacrifices for us and it becomes easier for us. It becomes a way of loving one another and being loved and cared for. So church, it's not always easy to come up against against our own sinfulness. It's not always easy to, to think about the ways in which we become selfish and want things for ourselves because they make us feel good or happy or because we have the right to it or the freedom to it. Yeah, sure, we have the right and freedom to not wear a mask. But we are called to to care for our community, to care for one another as Christian followers of Christ. We're called to care for the other. So, as we confront our sinful nature, it's who we are. I wrestle with with you all in this. What does it look like to acknowledge the freedom and the rights and the liberties that we have while acknowledging our neighbor and thinking about what can we give up to show love and care for them? Because when we do that, we demonstrate God's love for us. And that speaks louder than any sermon or message that anyone could speak when our actions get behind our words, when we demonstrate that love, that is transformational. And that is how people begin to experience Christ, not just hear about Christ, but experience Christ because we share that love with them. And they experience that. And that becomes life-changing. So church... How are you going to join God this week in giving life to somebody, in giving up something of your own, in giving life to another human being to help them witness Christ, to help them see how God is actively at work in our world, constantly raising the dead, bringing about new life each and every day. Thanks be to God and amen. Let's sing together. Come sing and rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with gold, like wildfire in our very souls.
And now let us pray the evening prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. We rejoice in your generous goodness, O God, and celebrate your lavish gifts to us this day. For you have shown your love in giving Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Especially we give thanks for the labors of those who have served this day, friends with whom we have shared, those whom we love and who have loved us, opportunities for our work to help others, all beauty that delights us. Gracious God, we know you are close to all in need and by our prayers for others who come closer to you. We are bold to claim, to claim for others your promises of new life in Jesus Christ. As we claim them for ourselves, especially we pray for those in dangerous occupations, physicians and nurses, those who are ill and confined to nursing homes, those who mourn, and other bodies of Christ, especially the Roman Catholic Church. Great God, you are one God, and you bring together what is scattered and mend what is broken. Unite us with the scattered peoples of the earth that we may be one family of your children. Bind up all our wounds and heal us in spirit, that we may be renewed as disciples of Jesus Christ, our Master and Savior. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and he is gracious unto you. The Lord looks upon you with every favor and he gives you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, it was a blessing to have you tonight. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.